These are the sites that were Vietnam during that conflict. Helicopters carrying men into battle, often carrying casualties away from battle. Helicopter pilots were among the highest casualty people, uh, the highest casualty rates were often among those helicopter pilots. And the experience of being a helicopter pilot in Vietnam and through that experience the entire war I don't think has ever been written about more effectively than in a book that is called Chicken Hawk, written by a fellow named Robert Mason. Bob Mason went to Vietnam to do what he loved to do, fly. And he's written Chicken Hawk, which is what the pilots referred to themselves as, as a way of explaining what happened to him there and what's gone wrong since that time. Uh, Bob Mason's wife, Patience, is with us. And this is the first time you've been on a TV show to talk about your husband's book. This story takes some very strange turns, and we'll get to those in just a moment. But can you describe your husband before he went off to Vietnam? What kind of fellow was he? He was a really happy guy. He was very idealistic and good at what he did, and he always tried to do whatever he thought he would like to learn. He learned it. That's why he went into helicopter school. There was no war, but he wanted to fly helicopters. During the course of the war, he wrote to you often. I think he wrote to you daily, That's and right. some of the letters are, are in the book. I went through the whole thing. I was fascinated by it. Were you able to gauge any of the changes that were going on as he was surrounded by this horror, the terror, the death, the dying, and then, oddly, on the other hand, the humor that he would often write about in the war zone? It, yeah, I could see that terrible things were happening to him. You know, he'd write me letters that started out, well, I'm still alive today. Yeah. And he wrote about all the mistakes that the uh, high command was making and the unfairnesses of it. He was there for a year. Uh, when he came back, he was a different fellow. Yeah. What was he like when he came back? Well, first of all, he weighed 119 pounds. He looked like he'd been in Buchenwald. And he was extremely nervous. The first night he was there at home, he woke up, there was a loud noise like that. And he was three feet off the bed. I mean, he just, boom. And he was like, he's been like that ever since. He, he doesn't was, do it as often. Yeah. He was Couldn't taken sleep. off flight status. They wouldn't let him fly anymore. That was after he had been instructing at Fort Walters yeah. in Texas for almost a year. He, w he flew in Vietnam. He flew the whole year. Let's explain, patients, why you're out talking about this book and your husband's not. OK, well, he's in prison for attempting to smuggle marijuana into this country. And I really feel that he did that as a mission to try and save our financial state at the time. We had both been running paper routes, and his car blew up. We didn't have any money. He was trying to write. He'd held a couple of yeah, pretty good jobs. He, that's right. He'd written a third of the book and gotten four rejections, which said, this is great, but nobody wants to read about Vietnam. Did he talk to you about the experiences that he had when he yes. got back? Did he uh -huh. share some of these things, friends dying in front of him, picking up bodies, carrying them? back behind the line. He sh shared those, but mostly he just shared funny things. You know, I don't think it's until you start reading some of the books about Vietnam that you realize the horror of it. You watched your husband go down to 119 pounds and lose all his verve and energy and not be able to sleep at night. Did you feel that there was anything that you as a wife could do to help him because he was diagnosed as having PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The VA so it said that, right? And it's that's something right. that's common among Viet vets. He, he I couldn't help him because he was reacting to what he'd seen over there, to the dead, burnt babies and the people in pieces and things like that. At the time, when he was very angry, I felt that he was angry at me. I didn't realize that he was angry at the world and the war. And I took it quite personally. We had a lot of fights. But eventually, I started realizing that it wasn't me and that he just had a terrible problem from that war that he's probably never going to get over. When he was arrested for attempting to fly drugs He did not the, fly the on Wasn't a sailboat. He was on a sailboat. 32-foot sailboat. He was the crew man. He was the very inexperienced. They were amateurs. What did he say? Did he ever say to you, you need to help me more? Or uh, it, did he ever blame you for this downward spiral that he was in? No. I was doing everything I could. And we both knew that. I mean, he was just in a lot of trouble. A lot of vets are like that, and they do yell at their wives because your wife's the closest person, and she loves you, so she'll understand why you're yelling, but you don't really. You, f you take it personally. This book has become a national bestseller, and you're going to be going around talking to a lot of people, and I think that there'll be reaction from a lot of vets to the book and to what you have to say about it, because you represent a lot of wives and the problems that they've had when their husbands came back from Vietnam. On the line with us now is uh, Dr. Sheldon Ziegelbaum. Uh, Boston psychiatrist who specializes in post-traumatic stress disorder, the Viet Vets syndrome, if you will. Uh, Dr. Ziegelbaum, have you been listening to this interview? Yes, I have. 
has patients ex the experiences that patients has had uh, do those sound familiar to you? What what patient describes and and what her husband has written written in the book are both rather classic descriptions of the harvest that we're beginning to that we began to reap in the uh, early earlier 1980s and will reap for the rest of this decade uh, surrounding the Vietnam combat veteran, uh, especially uh, helicopter pilots who saw as much action as her husband saw. Is it uh, is it common for the wife to feel that uh, she's part of the problem at least at first, as patient said that she did? It's very common. These men are isolated. They are difficult to sleep with in the same bed. They startle easily. Uh, they have enormous difficulty getting close. Uh, they can't seem to maintain any mainstream life experiences the way uh, contemporaries of the wife who have not had the prior experience of combat in Vietnam can do. Dr. Sheldon Ziegelbaum, thank you very much. Patients, uh, Bob is in jail now. He'll be out when? In 11 months. And you when count he comes, it by months. <laughs> and when he comes out, do you feel he's on the mend? Are things getting better? Will the two of you be oh, able to yeah. make it? Oh, we've been very happy with each other for the last five years. We don't have any interpersonal problems. Our problems have all been financial and then... <laughs> well, the book may take care of that because this is, uh, I think, one of the finest pieces of writing about men in battle since, uh, uh, well, probably since The Naked and the Dead, Norman Mailer's first book. That was fiction. This is all...